victory is ours! Whoa, with our brimstone! Now, the journey continues with a silver adventure box. Without being in practice on this one, I think the pain cliffs, to me, is my most despised tribulation level. And I mean that in a flattering way. Maybe Zone 3, Stormtop in Tribulation is actually worse. They're both pretty close. But uh, it's a really fun one in terms of showing all the cheeky things the devs actually do. Starting off with, this time we're not boxed in with spikes. I always get a weird tingly excitement wondering how the level's going to start. We're not boxed in with spikes, but as soon as we walk up the regular way, you'll see there's these spikes, and then there's these spikes, and then... Hold on, what? There's nowhere to go. What do we do? That's it. It's game over. It's like we're playing an escape room right now. I love these puzzly moments. Seriously, guys, how do we get out of this? Well, if you actually look right round here, there is a route. No reason to come here, even for any shops or baubles or anything in normal mode. But you will see we can travel. And just as confirmation from the devs that you are doing the right thing, they put some little spikes here, just in case you go too close to any cliffs. Those lessons you learned climbing the trees in World 1, keep applying them here. Do not go near the edge of anything that you don't have to. And we're only just getting started here. So that leads us to this tree that for some reason I can't climb up. And, well, we have a really big jump here. Now, as far as I know, you have to jump dodge this. Maybe, maybe if you like wait until the last tiny littlest millisecond and you perfectly balance like the height you lose as you slope down on the leaves compared to the height you, you know, the distance you get across. Maybe this is a jump you can make. Maybe what they want you to do is to go underneath. Oh, they want you to go. No, 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 no. Yeah, you can't go underneath because this is too low. I really have no idea if this is possible with a regular jump. I do seem to remember a quote from the devs that they'd never really require jump do dodges. That they knew it was in the game, that they liked it. They liked it in competitive modes and stuff and they thought it was cool. But it wasn't going to be like required. Maybe that was just a normal mode consideration though. But here at the start of the pain cliffs, it's like a brick wall of saying, look. This is some serious crap you're about to go through. Learn some stuff. And so jump dodge is pretty much needed here, I think. I don't know. Maybe you guys in the comments can tell me. I always jump dodge that. And that's that's brutal because jump dodging takes a lot of practice. It's within like a, it's what, 10 milliseconds or something between the, the two presses. You might end up going on this whole adventure where you change your keybinds. And it's, it's, a, it's a wall to climb over that none of the rest of Tribulation Mode so far has asked you to climb over. Maybe you enjoy all the other stuff, the trolley bits and, you know, the having fun, wondering what the devs have done and seeing alternate way throughs that are known. And then you hit this and this is like a real barricade in terms of Twitch execution skill. The rest of it's just like rooting and things. So anyway, yeah, interesting. And that's not the only time we'll be doing that in the pain cliffs. Most of the time for uh, bonus skips, but yeah. And so here, look, you'll see we actually come out the top. Pretty nice. I always cling to the edges here because I know that there's spikes on all of these goddamn trees and all over the place. Now, what the main direction to go in, uh, what the devs want you to do mainly, okay, is climb over here. Uh, on top of this this leaf grab this balloon here and grab this cloud you can see the route that you'd take Maybe there's some spikes around. I'm gonna skip that entire checkpoint acquisition altogether Seriously, I'm gonna skip the whole thing and it's uh, because when you get this What it ends up leading you doing is falling down on the inside of this slope here And you end up climbing up over there and doing all that stuff instead. We're gonna come along the outside and in just a couple of jumps, we're going to find ourselves here. That has actually bypassed a ton of spikes and precarious traps and things that are all placed around here. And we just move on. We are now a little bit more threatened at the start of the zone. Because if we die, we're all the way back to the start. We have to do that jump dodge and come back. But this route here, if you practice this just a little bit, and it is a grueling start to the level. It really is. It's a long pr procedure we're going to go through here. If you practice it, it is a lot quicker. Okay. Um, here, I was avoiding some spikes on the inside. We're just going to climb along these trees. This bit's mostly safe. Here, there's some spikes here on the inside, so be careful. But we can come up, grab the balloon, and jump over here. Now, here's a really dangerous bit, too. Um, oh, is this a dangerous bit? Basically, I just hug the inside here. I don't actually know whether... whether oh, here, here it is. Here it is. If you try and walk directly forwards onto this cliff, there's spikes all over it. But 
And I know it's a bit confusing right now. We got a balloon and we're kind of just ambling around. But if you walk around the outside of this top, okay, not into the middle of it, there's spikes. You can jump down onto the other side and make a beeline for the checkpoint and you'll get it, okay? So that's the first checkpoint. That whole thing I just did there, honestly, is really irritating. When you go and play, you try and copy exactly what I just did. You're going to hit random spikes in some strange places. But just be very precise about staying on the edges of the cliffs and you'll be okay. When you get that first checkpoint, you can breathe. A sigh of relief. You can just kind of come up here. Now, here's a funny thing. Well, the flower, obviously. That's a huge jump. I'm never going to make that. Oh, but they've spiked the flower. So here's jump dodge, I think, number two. Again, I always have to do this as a jump dodge. It's just such a vast distance you have to move. But yeah, obviously the spikes aren't that big. So we're going to go around the outside. And what, does a regular jump really... Is that really possible with a regular jump? I just... I don't know. So uh, this is something I jump dodge as well. Um... Two of them quite quite near the start. I don't think that there's any other routes. I don't think you can do stuff with the cliffs. I hate the pain cliffs for another reason. That you've got this constant pressure of the owls stealing your baubles. Oh, I forgot to cash them in. Ah, whatever. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so yeah, you're going to kill that guy. I don't like standing on the top of that. Maybe there's spikes there. I'm really not sure. Uh, but then we come to this sequence. Now this is hell. Why is this hell, you might wonder. But it's a bit of like what they did in World 1 Zone 1 with flowers. Remember, we learned to hate the flowers. They're not really in many of the other places, thankfully. But what are in other places? Angry rocks. Rocks. I think pretty much every single one of these is an angry rock. Seriously. Maybe not the really tiny ones like this guy here, but they're all ferocious. You just jump in there, they're all going to go crazy. You get stunned, 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 you're going to fall off, all right? Or into that keg over there. So uh, what we're going to do is jump right into the middle about where it looks like there's this dig spot. And then we're going to evade up into this tree, okay? And we're going to hide in the tree. We're going to do it really quick, okay? So go, and we're going to dodge. We get a double evade, and we're going to just come right up into the tree. So from here, we're safe. The assassin can't even, the ninja can't even hit us there. And now, with the threat is, when we go back, they're going to knock us into this. So we're going to just basically jump and then dodge forward again. Okay, ready? Actually, I'm going to jump twice. Okay, we moved away. Two little jumps is fine. They're too, little, too slow. But that bit is really, really scary. Another bit that I always really struggled for a long time, but literally on my last run of this, when I got like my 14th weapon, I figured this out. You see that finger over there? He tries to kill you. So you say, all right, you just dodge it like all the other ones. But here's the thing. The cloud is one of the clouds that breaks. So if I jump here, okay, and I jump onto the cloud, well, I can't immediately dodge because I'll fall off of the cloud. If I jump dodge, I'm like going to have to clear a massive gap to get to the land on the other side. So I might not be able to make it. So what can I do? Well, I can land on the clouds and then, uh, you know, on the right, and then the the fi and then I can run to the left and the finger will miss me. But then the cloud's gonna break. Well, here, there's a whole process with this, okay? Which is this: you come over, you deceive him. The cloud breaks. Ah, I fell anyway. Okay, the cloud breaks. But there, as you just saw there, there's a real cloud underneath it. I did do that on my last run. There's a real cloud underneath it. Now, the real cloud you can stand on, but another layer of obscurity, okay? Another complication is that the real cloud under the cloud that breaks that you stayed on for too long because... Oh, God, I didn't dodge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's okay. All right, so this assassin's really good here because he hits you and he makes you invulnerable. So if you can... Don't kill him, basically. You'll notice I didn't kill him earlier. Uh, if he hits you, you go invulnerable and then the, the rocks can't knock you around anymore. Um, but yeah, the, the other layer I'll show you, okay? The real cloud that's under the fake cloud, you think, oh, but awesome, I'm safe. The thing is... There are spikes on this. If you just try and make the jump now, you'll hit spikes on the lower down thing. So what you can do is just stand still. And this is all I wanted to show. If you stand still, when the, the cloud that breaks reappears, it spawns you back here. And that's the way safely through. You jump to the side, avoid the finger, stand on the real cloud, don't walk into the spikes, and then you come through. All right, that's the whole thing. That's how to get through that bit alive, or the way that I know. Maybe you can do like a jump dodge on the first jump or something, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I made a mountain out of my hill. I don't really know. Okay, spikes everywhere, so climb the tree. I think there's even spikes on this branch here that you might be tempted to go to. So go under this leaf and then up over here. And um, and when you get to the top of the tree, you might be tempted to go straight onto this. This is all spikes on top of this as well. You'll also notice there's a checkpoint. So let's do this. Now, this is a kind of a funny thing. I really love this, right? You got the checkpoint. Now, very rarely in tribulation mode... Do they add new jumps? 
and make new routes. Usually it's locking off old ones and making us go obnoxious new ways. The devs could have done this a ton of times. And here's something they've done. In normal mode, it is impossible to get on top of this tree. You can't do it. You can't get on this tree. However, in trib, because there's the balloon dispenser, you can use it to one, claim the balloon, and two, actually get stand on it as high as you can. Not like slightly down a bit, but fully on it. And then jump to the lowest leaves. And you can get on top of this tree. This is not accessible in normal mode. And now you get the checkpoint, which you could skip if you like, but I always get this. I'm too scared of this part of the map. Like I said, spikes all on top of this. I'll just pop them to demonstrate to you, you guys. What we're going to do is jump around the spikes, which you'll notice don't cover the whole platform. They stop, right? So we're going to go onto this area here and use that as our platform to jump through. Again, if you take a direct route to the checkpoint... I appreciate how confusing the start of this level is, by the way. It's just all generic hills and trees. Unless you know the normal mode one really well, you might have just wondered if we're even making progress here. We are. <laughs> uh, don't go directly for the checkpoint. All spikes all around. So what we're going to do is go this way. Ah, oh, that one always... Ca okay, that one's legit. I'm not trying to show that off. I always forget about that, and I always die to that. Like, nearly every run I died to that. I always forget about this. Okay, so you've got to go around the outside, but also you have to jump onto this you can't walk onto the leaves that are lower it has to be on this you're safe here but otherwise the spikes down there will get you and then you have to come here i'm always so preoccupied with like skirting around now i used to come all the way to the edge here you really don't you can sort of start moving up from here right uh and then you can move up now last but not least you got a dangerous keg that the assassin can knock you into and that finger he's pointing the right way to go so he's a bad finger so we're gonna dodge when we get close to him and get the checkpoint Woo. Finally, we're at the ninja areas. So, the ninja areas were a whole, like, kettle of hell. I'll trigger these spikes while we say. Even in the original normal mode run, if you guys remember, uh, I pointed this out on a normal mode run, all the dart traps were insta-kills originally, and people hated it. I'm talking about normal mode right now. All the dart traps were insta-kills. Um, so they fixed it. Oh, well, fixed it, changed it. Fixed, I think, is a bit of a loaded term in this context. They changed it so that they don't instantly kill you. They just do damage and knock back in normal mode. Well, for Trib, they are their true original selves. They're one-shots. They kill you. I actually got hit by two traps at once there, which I never expected. This, obviously, is really easy at the start here. Every normal made player knows not to go for that life right there. But here on Trib, these spikes cover the whole bridge and you kind of want to ignore it altogether. What I do is I just cling to the edge all the way over here. Maybe you can do it on the left too. I honestly don't know. I just come all the way on the right and then we're past. Now what the devs want you to do here again is to like climb this tree and go up all this stuff. And there's like hidden precarious spikes. But what I'm going to do, like right next to me is some spikes. I'm going to use the technique we used in the last zone right at the end. Where there are actually spikes all on the terrain. But I'm standing so far off the terrain. I'm slightly over the edge right now. And I'm just going to run along. And I've actually avoided a spike trap here. And now I can come up here. There were all spikes. That allows you to skip all the mess with the tree. Um, do you know what? I'm a good guy. I'm going to show you what it looks like. There you go. Check it out. All right. So what we did was we walked along the side of that. Again, I don't, do the devs know? that they, they kind of taught us. That you have to do that in the last zone. And that it's okay in the last zone. So maybe it's fine. This one's a real puzzle though to figure out. Because if you don't land directly on top of these red things. These spikes will end up killing you often. Unless you use this to... Ah, I cut too early on the corner there. Ridiculous. So yeah, you do have to go quite early on the inside there. Because the slope um, needs to be quite high up, right? Does that make sense? Otherwise you can't make the jump. Here, I'll, I'll demonstrate that a little bit better with footage for you all. You can, by the way, if you're scared, just jump over here. Like, I can't make this jump. Oh, I can make this jump. Look, you can't make the jump from down here. You have to be on the slope. You have to cut it close to these spikes to make this. Okay, now what the devs want us to do is to go around on the right. So I'll show you going around on the right. <clears throat> they want us to come up here. Hug the wall this time. You're usually taught not to hug the wall. But instead of going across those uh, hills and stuff, can this guy knock, knock us around? We can end up with this balloon. There's a fake rock here. Angry rock. We can go along. Uh, this finger will try to kill you while you're on the flower that launches you over there, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, so try not to do that. If you come over here, you've got a cloud that you can throw the balloon on. And then you're away on your adventure, right? Uh, so, and then off we go. So that's the whole section that you can do if you want more checkpoints. Here I'll show you a, a really sneaky uh, road. Um, that I saw on someone's stream recently uh, that I just had to get good at. I had to practice it. And I don't actually recommend you guys do this too much. 
but sometimes you see a thing that blows your mind and I kind of enjoy it. So instead of going all up around there, we're going to come onto this and over here. And we're going to go straight to the pagoda. The thing is that there are sp this, this landing down here, there are spikes all over that. So we need to land onto the plant that's behind that where there aren't spikes. But to skip the landing to get to that spike, we need to jump. But if you jump, you'll hit your head on the, the roof, the, the leaves that are up here. So you need to hang on the edge to the left here so that I can jump, not hit my head, and sort of skip this landing and land on the leaves there, okay? I'm going to do it with a bit of a run-up. Ah, uh, there I triggered it accidentally. But here you can actually see now much clearer what I'm talking about. And you do have to be on the outside a little bit to do that. It's weird. If I do this all in sequence, I can kind of just smoothly breeze through it. But when I stop to explain, it totally throws off the whole momentum of the run. So, um, yeah, let, let's try that again. I appreciate you've seen this checkpoint a lot. And I'm kind of going into a lot of detail here. I just find this level fascinating in how difficult it is and how much stuff there is to talk about. Again, I went too low because I went too much around the outside. I'll show you that probably now. Right, so like that. You see how easy that is? And then you got all this safe space here, uh, the way you can avoid the spikes. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, you'll notice we're 20 minutes into the level already, and we're not even at the first uh, you know, weight puzzle, which is all the way over there. But we'll get there pretty quickly. So once you're in this position, you might say, well, what can you do now, WP? Well, you can jump dodge. Man, I'm missing so many things. Straight over there. If you miss the jump dodge, there's no threat. You can just come back and try again until you get it. And with a jump dodge, you're now like super safe. All of this stuff is just really clean and easy and happy. And then you can just jump onto this, onto this, and you're at the checkpoint and you're at the weight puzzle. So actually that route there, just going slightly left, <laughs> I can't believe I hit those spikes. Going slightly left uh, is probably the quickest way. You don't have to worry about the balloon and you don't have to worry about the angry rock that knocks you around and that explosive barrel at the other area. Just jump dodge over to the pagoda. If the game's made it so you kind of had to learn how to jump dodge already anyway, maybe it's worth honing your technique and going further. The scales puzzle is exactly like in normal mode. There's absolutely nothing different about this at all. No hidden spikes. No tricks up their sleeve. Uh, they just give us a bit of a breather here. I wonder if it's because they had no inspiration for how to change this. Why didn't that uh, trampoline work there? Or uh, something else. But I'm pretty grateful usually when I get here. Just knowing that I can uh, quite smoothly go through. Obviously, it's not like infantile mode. Where you can skip the whole thing with a rainbow path. But still, not too bad. Also, remember when he's at the lowest thing. Oh, I wasn't even trying to jump there. I wasn't even trying to bounce. If you land on the rim, you won't bounce on that last one. And uh, yeah, you don't have to go to the max height on that. I always thought it'd be kind of funny if they put spikes as you climb up off of that platform at the end. Or in the middle of this gong. But there's just nothing to speak of. Back to Green Hills for just a little while again now. And we're coming up to Shortcut Eagle. So, in World 1, they did something really fun with Shortcut Worm. So what might they have done with Shortcut Eagle, you may wonder? Well, let's have a look. Shortcut Eagle... Obviously, Shortcut Worm, you can see how they had things to play with and to make things deadly and dangerous, right? They had all the spikes and they had, like, something to work with. But Shortcut Eagle, well... It's not really got any mechanics. It's amazing looking, but it just like throws owls at you. What, are the owls going to one-shot us now? Well, let's see. Let's go on through. You can move all the way up to the shop as well. I'm pretty sure I've never done it. Let's see what Shortcut Eagle says. Well, we're on our way. Let's do it. Man, I love this animation. So badass. We can just hide behind the head is what I mean here, right? Like, and it's not even too much of a challenge. In fact, where are all the baubles coming at us? Oh, here we go. There are actually some. It's been a long time since I've done this. So, yeah, the owls come. Brack can just sit and wait. I'd love to be able to zoom in. Oh, I can zoom in better on these sequences. Look at this. Look at the world going by. Look at this. Oh, man. Oh, it makes you a little bit seasick, doesn't it? I, I want more Super Adventure Box. If only just have more sequences like this and the raft. Come on. Look at how cool World 2 was. It's fantastic. So we're going to the end of the level. This is absolutely exactly what I signed up for. This is such a long zone. You can kind of understand how the devs would be reasonably forgiving to players about being able to just skip through, right? I mean, in the other zone, they did have pretty long chunks that felt a lot like normal mode as we were moving through the rapids and stuff. And after all, if there's going to be loads and loads and loads of zones, they can't keep getting longer and longer. Well, here we go. This is the end. Let's see how it looks. 
Oh, no. So, uh, hilariously, what it does is it puts you back to the start of the level instead of the end. How fantastic is that? Truly brilliant. Thankfully, it doesn't reset your checkpoint progress. But the only reason I think it doesn't reset your checkpoint progress, thus allowing you to spawn back where you actually were, is because they don't sort of have the mechanical capability of doing it. They can justify the time to code something that complicated in. Uh, if they could, I'm sure they would have. And uh, you truly would have been punished for being a dirty cheat. So, funny stuff. Here, it's pretty basic. But don't... Um don't stray too much of the path. I honestly can't even tell you where all the spikes are here. I think it's just climb the tree like normal. This, okay, this section is really tricky, okay? You can get stuck here for ages. Let's talk about what's going on. Number one, uh, the whole ground here is spikes, all right? So what you're going to want to do is jump onto this rock, then this rock. And then from this rock, you might think, oh, well, I'll come up here. That's too high. And from this rock, if you try and go straight to the tree, it's also too high. Also, all down here is spikes, so we can't just walk around, right? We have to go onto the top. So what you're going to do is jump on this rock, jump on this rock, and then from this rock, jump under this tree to, like, just get to the other side of the line of spikes that's, like, where my cursor is right now. That may sound fine. Extra complication, there's a toad who will try to pull you in if you're too slow. And also, this isn't a regular rock. It's an angry rock. So all this stuff will juggle you around. And just spell disaster if you don't do it very smoothly and very confidently. Also, when you're jumping to this rock, if you walk too far on this rock, you, there's this downward slope. And you'll slide down and hit the spikes before you even get towards the proper jump. So you have to jump from the very peak of this platform. Now, having done all this explanation and completely stalled myself... <gasps> I knew I'd thrown, it, thrown myself off. I knew that I just ruined my mojo. I hit the tree. All right, so let's do it now normally. Oh, jeez, it's so weird. Luckily, you'll see. You can sort of get back here in just seconds. Okay, so nice, confident jump. Okay, we got knocked. Usually, I don't even get knocked, right? But we come over here. Do not dawdle around there because of the toad. Now, what we need to do is climb the tree. And the tree is pretty scary in its own way. I think it might even have some spikes on it. So we're just going to move quickly. And over. The toad will always take a pop at you, but I don't think he ever really lands. And we're up to the next area. No spikes here, really. But you see that finger? He's dangerous. So I like to stay back here and kill this assassin so that he doesn't knock me into the finger or do anything nasty. I, th I think you could probably just run in a beeline. And then about halfway through, I just take a random dodge. There you go. And we get that. I always hang on the outside of these. I don't actually know if there's spikes on the inside, but I do. And this whole area here is nice and safe and comfortable. You don't even have to jump on the inside there. I'll show you guys. And sweet. We're to the mini boss. So, uh, with the mini boss, here's an interesting technique I use, I guess. I stand by the door and shoot him a couple of times till he starts blocking, okay? Then he's going to line a sight in. And what we can do is run him in little circles like this. Once he starts blocking, okay, we're going to stand like so. Actually, round here so that he comes all the way through. As he runs at us, we're going to cast our Elite, okay? Which is going to do a ton of damage to him. And then we're going to walk onto the spikes. Now, what this will do is kill Brax. I'm really sorry, Brax. But it will also reset... Oh, he's running off too fast. So I don't know why. It also gives us our Elite back. So you can actually just spam the Elite, basically, is what I'm saying. You'll notice that Tribulation Mode has actually wanted us to fight him in these spikes. But listen, I've played dungeons in this game. I know how line of sighting works. It's amazing. So we can just put him here. And here I... Because I got hit there, he didn't die yet. Now you can basically kill him really quickly. This guy's actually deceptively tanky. And he can take a long time to fight. But doing two elite skills... And a couple of early shots as you first see him... Works out really well. You have to kill him, not to pick up the power glove, but just so that this door here opens. Just the same as in normal mode. I find it interesting that in the, even in Trib, the devs force you to get this power up. Um, I guess it's so that they can force you to use the block pushing puzzles later as well. One of the trolliest things I guess Trib could do would be to have you skip this, essentially, or think you can skip this, only to then, like, take your glove away or something. I don't know. That would be kind of interesting. But again, extra coding that they obviously can't justify the time on. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this room here that I just walked through, there's dart traps. You should remember from normal mode. By jumping through the middle of the room, as I demonstrated there, you wouldn't, you'd be none the wiser that there's actually anything there at all. 
I, I kind of like this zone having the dart traps. Just that it keeps it fresh from all the spike traps we'd seen so much of before. But maybe that's just me. Here, everything's pretty safe. There's no spikes or anything really dangerous that they're trying to catch you out with. Of course, on your first time through, there'll always be the fear of that. But you can run up, hit this, and move on. If you think about it from a design uh, perspective, it does make sense that this place is mostly safe. It would be really weird, for example, to add traps and spikes on just some of these clouds. Because then that would be a method of basically punishing people for playing this in co-op. Even though you're already somewhat punished for playing in co-op. Because of that whole staggered, some people are faster at some things and slower at other things. And you always have to do the slowest. You're always as tethered to the slowest speed, right? So you're always going to be a little bit slower just through random chance playing co-op. So yeah, it makes sense that they didn't change this much. Also, yeah, I'm walking around on this bell. I'm demonstrating this. We only managed to do this because we bounced up on the checkpoint. I'm demonstrating this here in case at the end of the level, I fail. Where this can actually be useful for you. But more on that later. This checkpoint we're- What? Come on! This checkpoint we're now on is extremely deadly. Like, there's a billion things that can kill you, and you could end up easily end up spending half an hour or more just at this one part, okay? So, first of all, you walk through these, and they'll fire at you. If you get a single dodge, the two on the left won't hurt you. And then there's this guy over here, who you can dodge as well. I did that really late, all right? He's obviously lying to you. This whole cloud path that would skip you to the end, don't bother. There's spikes. You'll die. You have to do the main puzzle. Now, I do want to know, even if the content itself doesn't change much, every year the festival comes back, a very, very slim subsection of the Guild Wars 2 community does speedrun this stuff and tries to get new world records. This year, a couple of days before the festival ended, right around as I'm making these videos, and thus now I'm editing this in, someone has posted a five-minute clear of this whole level that involves going to those clouds. You just have to do some really crazy jumps, clipping into and off of totally unexpected walls. There's a similar skip right at the beginning of the level too. Doing it basically bypasses the next 30 minutes of this YouTube video, and it's amazing, so I just had to mention that it exists. So, we're gonna push this and not walk under the traps, which would one-shot us, just as I showed off in normal mode. We're gonna push these. I keep seeing to, to Quattle here and uh, uh, it keeps freaking me out and I'm thinking that it's like a ninja or something. And we're gonna push this all the way through. Of course, this whole section with the block, you only have to do once. So while it is a long checkpoint, you do make permanent progress as you work on it, right? We're gonna jump over this because otherwise we'll die. And we're gonna come to the hell room up here with the big puzzle filled with tons of blocks to push. Now, when I did this in normal mode, I did point out that you can do it a long way where you push every single block to the maximum distance it can go. Let me see if I can get the camera here. You can push every single block until none of them are pushable anymore. And then finally, you'll be able to jump on the platform and move out. You can see my normal mode discussion for a demonstration of that. I did mention during the normal mode playthrough that there is also another method where you just push a couple of blocks a little bit and it will unlock an earlier way through. But I didn't show that off, and I wasn't quite remembering how to do that when we played it on normal mode. However, I've been farming this like mad now, so I do know how to press the specific blocks. I did get a couple of comments from you guys on that video, saying, Oh, WP, if you're just smart, you can, you don't have to push all the blocks. It's just about being smart about it. On that, I call complete crap. It's not about being smart. It's about r rote memory and other people telling you what to do. Why that's the case is there's no logic to how far each of these blocks will go, uh, what direction they'll rotate after you've pushed them, and where they'll ultimately end up. There's no intelligence behind saying, oh, which block do I push and where? You can only guess as to how far they'll slide and when they'll turn and how they'll turn. It's basically just a matter of being very careful about what you press or learning a specific route, which is what I'll show you guys here. I kind of resent that about this puzzle, but it's not a big deal. So here's the fastest way through. Oh, and by the way, they make it extra complicated. Not only does everything one-shot you, there's a tribulation cloud here now. This is the worst tribulation... Well, maybe, maybe Zone 3 has some worse, actually. This is a pretty bad tribulation cloud. What it means is you're going to keep getting stunned, not blocked. You can't do anything about this, just as I said in Zone 1. He, you just have to take your licks, okay? And he can knock you into the traps that will throw you all over the place. You can lose tons of health. This is one of the places where it's really good to have potions just for a bit of sunbreak and an extra health if you get really unlucky with the cloud. So, all of that said, let's do it. On the initial trampoline up, we're going to come over this trap. Remember, we just escaped a cage. And what we're going to do is press this block first. 
then this block. And we're going to try and do it quickly. We're going to cut through here and all the way along. You'll see we're very specifically moving to avoid traps right now. The tribulation cloud has hit us. I'm not going to stun break that or do anything there. We're going to come around here. We're going to press this. This one we're going to press as well. But we're not going to walk so far forward that we actually get hit by the trap. Then, okay, we'll stun break that. Then we're going to walk into the middle. And we're going to go to the right. No! Okay, that's not too bad. Here, I can show you guys the route again without the pushing. Okay, so we jump over. We can cut through the inside of this. This is not a problem. We can cut through the inside of this. This is not a problem. And you do have to go from a very specific specific angle. And then we're going to go up here. And we're going to jump up on the right to get to the checkpoint. There you go. And we got all of our hearts. I cannot tell you how many times this toad here has killed me right at the end of that. Super frustrating. So, beyond the mysterious bag, of which we may never get an answer to, unfortunately... Uh, we can kill this assassin and move on into the next checkpoint. It's a good idea to clear all of the enemies out in this section just because now we come to a very long path. Uh, again, just as that previous checkpoint could take you ages, this one could take you ages too. There's two routes. One, which I learned my first time ever playing, which was to jump dodge straight to this. But I'm pretty sure, and we can cast our elite on this guy. All right, I won't. Yeah, no, I will cast my elite. Here we go. He's going to spam these CC. So we're going to cast our elite to instantly kill him and then drop the drawbridge over there and we can move on. You'll notice that this looks crazy. Totally different to normal mode. I really actually like the aesthetic here. It feels like we're playing a different game at this point. So you can jump dodge to this, go on, and away you go. However, that jump dodge to the top of that little pagoda or whatever we'd call these, all right, is not actually the fully, like, intended route. There is another way to go, and it's this. Instead, we hang left and climb up all of these clouds. This is what you might anticipate intuitively starting off that obviously the devs want you to do. Uh, but what threw me off about this route back when I first played it is when you come onto the... Oh, no. First of all, making stupid mistakes and falling like that. And I'll show you when we get back. When you get to this area, okay, it might seem obvious. Well, we're going to walk along this, get to these clouds, and then these clouds will, you know, will drop off on the other side. That's pretty good, right? But as you move in, if you come too far on any of these beams, like you want to get to that beam, obviously, right? There are spikes here. And nowadays, oh, fine, I'll do it. I'll get myself killed. Nowadays, the spikes persist. So you can see that they're not actually that big. But that thing I just experienced there where I walked forward and saw that spike, to me, on my first ever playthroughs, I read that as the dev saying, no, 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 you're way off track now. Because look at how far away we are here, guys. That they were basically saying, look, th this is not the tribulation route. This is somewhere altogether different. And so there's spikes on the inside of this. And there's spikes on the inside of this. And there's spikes on the inside of this. And the three jumps I just did there, when you were completely blind, was actually really difficult to know whether we this was what we were meant to do or whether that was meant to be a hard gate. And I ended up just going for that jump dodge to the more basic area over there. And it ended up working. So, this is a place where I actually think Tribulation Mode gets kind of confused, but maybe it's not a big deal. Once you do get past the spikes, you can come along all of these clouds, and it's a long route, but filled with extremely basic jumps. Deteriorating clouds are hardly going to be your problem anymore. There you go. So, you can climb onto this roof, and doing this whole sequence here, which I never go out of my way to do while farming this, by the way, and doing lots and lots of runs. Uh, will ultimately, here again, the spikes in front of you. We're only just back at the old checkpoint, right? We've backtracked a ton. Eventually, we'll give you this cloud and an alternate route to where we were before. A very smooth and comfortable one. If you get used to this jump dodge just to this, it's fine. The thing is, though, that is just the first jump of a whole mess of stuff now. A huge mess of stuff. And so, if you are a little bit uneasy with this and you anticipate dying in the upcoming stuff, maybe it is better to get this cloud because this is way more simple and cuts off something you'll end up killing yourself on over and over again. Notice here, by the way, that we managed to make this jump and it was easy and it was fine. Well, if you try and do that again later, here we can use our elite again because we've died in the meantime. Usually I'd use my slingshot from here, by the way. 
I'd do this, and he would die. Uh, and he can't fight back, so you just use a couple things. There, I guess I'll use my elite. I should have saved my elite for the next guy, but whatever. Uh, yeah, we made that jump there. In a minute, it will look like the exact same thing as possible. So here, obviously, this is all pretty simple. Just don't get hit by this. Here, you might want to try it again. But now it's impossible. I don't know why, but you can't with a regular jump. You have to jump dodge it this time. Why the hitbox is different? I haven't got a sausage. Maybe it's that the devs raised it off the ground just a little bit. Instead, I like to always come over to this pool and do it this way. We're going to run in little circles now, away from this assassin. And potions are going to be useful here, but not necessary. What I actually like to do is to back up and uh, hit him with projectiles. If you've died at any point in the meantime, you can just throw your elite at him and he'll die instantly. Or you can even stand back there and, and kill him as he runs towards you. It's actually a lot easier than it looks. This bit's a little bit RNG heavy. Just wait, because see, you can get hit by the fish when you're at the top here. Just wait for it. And I got myself killed. I can't believe it. There, basically, we were slower because we'd just been put in combat because of the piranha, which meant that we never made the jump. And so here you see I've got a very easy route, uh, sort of, back in. Maybe we can just skip that whole thing, actually, to tell the truth. Uh, it's so rare for me to do it like this. Can't we just come here? Yeah, once we've killed the boss, you can do this. Look at how easy that is. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have been in combat, because usually you don't get hit by these fish at all, right? So, right, we've done all that. And again, you see how Zone 2 is kind of interesting in that you do make a lot of permanent progress. You get rid of fingers, you break crates, like all these explosive crates, you kill enemies, uh, you lower drawbridges, and you make permanent progress. So you'll be at this checkpoint for ages, likely, especially on your first time, but you are continually, incrementally chipping away at the level. Uh, so what I've done here is I've skipped through the fish room, as, as I talked about a lot in normal mode, and I'm just clearing these landings of enemies, uh, first of all. One of the really dangerous things on this is that keg there. Quite often you might be tempted to get on the trampoline and just burst up like this. If you do that, you die to the keg. That's killed me so many times. It's one of the most frustrating elements of this whole uh, zone. So yeah, we're just going to clear these out. You could have a fish with you already. It's really time efficient to come with a fish. And you can drop the fish and then pick the fish back up in the middle of the fight over and over and over. I tend to not worry about all of that. Uh, especially if I don't have many health potions. But with both those landings clear, we can now start running the fish. So tribulation mode does something really... I'm going to have to kill myself here to show you. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, my God. I'm such an idiot. Don't forget to drop the fish and pick it back up. Otherwise, it will wriggle free and kill you. Uh, I'm going to have to extend this uh, just to show you guys what the devs are doing here. So basically... Well, first, let's pick him up. There we go. We climb up. Make sure that keg's blown up. That's the main one shot. The, the, the other enemies aren't too much of a threat, especially if you have potions. So get onto the roof with your fish. Come all the way along. And you can feed him, right? Now, your temptation here is going to be to jump straight back onto the landing. Obviously, we're in tribulation mode. It's going to kill you. <laughs> look at that. Brilliant. One of the funnier trolls here. And look, feel, see how bad this feels when you come all the way back here? But the truth is that because we already cleared everything... It only really takes a moment. We're back at the piranha room now, basically. Once I do this jump. No. Oh, what? Really? Oh, it is easy. Trust me. You get what I mean. So, yeah. Let's get back to where we were. So, the spikes are amazing. Because not only do they kill you on your way back out. But they make you realize as you're climbing back. Oh, god damn it. The ultimate, like extension the devs are asking us now they're telling us we have to go to the roof all three times at least in normal mode you don't have to climb the whole way up each time you only have to go to incrementally lower and lo lower and lower landings but no 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 this time we got to go the whole way well not necessarily true again another benefit of the recent update i say recent or later update that allowed us to see where the spikes are all the time actually and it has always been this way for very daring players. And remember, if these were totally invisible, this would be very daring. You can still do the regular technique. And here, there's spikes. But if we jump to the side, whoa, we're safe. And so you can actually make it. Um, this was something that until the update with the spikes came in, I would never do. Just because this feels like such a long sequence. To risk it at the end instead of just walking a little bit more. Like, who would do that? But now, with the spikes, I actually have a pretty good sense of it. And even while they're invisible, such as there, you can make the play. Now he's all the way down, pretty quick, we can move up. The last thing I'll point out, by the way, is this jump to this cloud 
is a hell of a jump. It's you think it's normal and you think it's smooth. And if you jump from here, you actually bang your head and you die. You the trick with this jump is to jump from really far back on the platform. The amount of times I've died on that basic jump is insane. I actually, while playing Trib, get more annoyed and more frustrated and more irked out when it's basic regular jumps that I fail on. And that cloud is one of the big ones. So there you go. We've done that. That was two really lengthy checkpoints back to back. You might be extremely burned out by the world at this point. Think about all the stuff we've got left. The gong puzzle. We've got this entire sequence here with the jumping. We've got the teleporter puzzle. You've got all the snowy stuff. You've got the room full of the toads. Ugh. Well, actually, the zone is much closer to ending than you might think. First, the devs never overcomplicated this sequence. I really think they could have. I mean, look, there's all these clouds we could have played around with. What if they'd added extra, uh, you know, big clouds that say no, no, no to you and you can jump on their heads and now all of these are spikes and we have to zigzag our way along. They could have done that, but I guess in the interest of time, they just let you do the regular jumps. Then this section here too, nothing about it really... Oh, well, okay, I think that there are some spikes and stuff around, I must be honest. Here you see I'm actually reflecting the ninjas, something... Well, we died there, that's fine, I guess. I'd rather die than... Um, uh, drink a potion to counter their pressure. Uh, there you yeah, go. You saw the reflect mechanic, which I hardly ever show off on this one. Uh, yeah, you could just come into the middle here, climb on up uh, immediately on this tree. I think that's the most efficient route in normal mode, and it's the most efficient route here. Here, we've got the toad room. You obviously can't skip it, but oh my god. Wow, we're getting hit by all the stuff. It's so weird. The timing's all wrong, and, and then things hit you. I, I don't, honestly, in like 15 runs, I genuinely don't think I've been killed by those toads. And yet here I was. We're also getting knocked around a bit weirdly by those trampolines. Look, here's what you do. You run over, you punch the thing, and you just walk through. Look, none of them hit you. And you go this way. Not even that one hits you. Yeah, that's what normally happens. I don't know how we got hit there. Oh, look, we're at the next checkpoint. Now. Now, 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 now. We're in tribulation mode. You know what this means. It's a happy face. I talked about this in normal mode. That there's a huge puzzle in here with a gong that you have to roll down. We showed it all off, okay? Takes ages. Ages and ages and ages. In tribulation, all of those dart traps are going to one-shot you. This is a hell of a long sequence. Longer maybe even than the other two earlier, but that tribulation cloud one's pretty freaking crazy. It's a lot of stuff. So obviously, in tribulation, we're going to have to do it, aren't we? This is going to be a lie. Obviously. Well, that's what I thought. When the festival came back to this year, just a couple of days ago, I did this whole thing in Trib. I spent like an hour in this, like when I was re-remembering everything, it was horrible. But it turns out that this is actually real. In all of Tribulation Mode, this is the one true, friendly, happy finger. I think it was in later years that the devs added this. You notice that the hand has plastered over a trap that otherwise would trigger. And so we can go this way. It's actually a thing. And so what I find really funny, this is a subsequent update. What I find really funny is when it came to adding that other update, just to make this zone a bit shorter because it was so insane, the devs had no real method of telegraphing available to them that would allow the player base to truly and sincerely know that they're not lying anymore, that it actually is real. All they can do is put this hand here and hope you'll believe it and hope you follow it or hope you're ultra attentive enough to remember that this should be a deadly trap right here and that there's still vaguely there, but it's been plastered over. So yes, the zone is not as long as you think it is. With one very quick moment, we've gone from what felt like the middle of the zone. Oh my God, what? Like, that's what I'm talking about. What the hell? Dying on basic stuff like that, unbelievable. We've gone from what felt like the middle of the zone to, I mean, guys, we're practically at the snowy area now, right? Well, oh my God, again? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh, it's the chess police catching up finally, getting revenge in subtle ways. It's karma. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. This is not difficult, guys. In fact, you don't even have to do that jump. You can just jump around the corner. But I'm going to demonstrate now that it's totally possible. <gasps> I... I'm flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. I'm calling the level easy, and it's biting back. What? Okay, look. Here, we'll go super try hard with this. Yeah, you can snipe that guy out from over here. Look at this. This is a really challenging puzzle, guys. Okay, we're, we're through. We can ignore the assassins as always. Come on along. No spikes. Nothing to be scared of. And we're in the teleport puzzle. So, the teleport puzzle does have... What was it? Left, right, left, right. 
forwards, I think. In normal mode. Uh, oh, no, we're back at the start now. Hold on. What was it? It was left, right. Is it just left, right, forwards, maybe? Oh, well, there we made it. All right, well, look. I'll show you. The secret teleporter sequence that you learn from the cave that, um, uh, that should just skip you right to the end of the level, you know, right to the end of the snowy area, that is not possible. And I'll, don't worry, you haven't missed out. I'll show you the exit to that. It insta-kills you, okay? So you have to go the normal way. You go the route I just showed you, all right? So you're going to come out of this teleporter. You're going to come here. You're going to hit the checkpoint. This is all the normal, slowest way through the level. And we've got this jumping sequence to do. We have not done the ultra-secret teleporter sequence, is what I'm trying to explain there. Okay, so we're going to progress on in the normal fashion. Oh, dear. There's spikes on the very first jump. This place is fantastic. And I particularly remember getting stuck here for hours on my first ever playthrough what was especially excruciating and it's on the internet you can see is when they first added tribulation mode we're quite deep into the level here these spikes behind me were overlapping with the spawn point so if you died on this sequence you'd respawn and die again and then respawn and die again and respawn and die again in an almost infinite chain of deaths unless you like managed to dodge forwards or move out very quickly it was insane not only that, which complicated matters, you also had just a brutal sequence. I'm going to take the time to get... Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to mess that up somehow. I am going to take the time. No. Oh, okay. Wow, this is kind of insane right now. I'm going to take the time, there we go, to get some furniture coins for my guild while I'm here, since these ones are so easy. Um, but yeah, this is a brutal sequence, right? Remember, these clouds weren't here when Tribulation Mode was first added. So, what do we do? Well, you've got the keg. Whoa, which didn't kill us. Usually, I skip that because it kills me. You can go straight from that trampoline. Um, and then... Oh, I'm, 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 I'm making all the mistakes here. Okay, let's just pretend we're a normal player. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go here. We're going to go here. And then we're going to say, all right, we'll go... Oh, okay, there's spikes. All right, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's spikes there, but if we go diagonal... Oh, my God. We died again. Uh, it's all falling apart. It's all falling apart, guys. I've been doing too much tribulation mode today. Too much. We're five zones in, and it's all collapsing. And there you go. There. Look. You'll see that the spike's there as well. So, in fact, the only way to actually make this is from the original trampoline doing an epic bounce. Again extremely punishing to people with latency issues. This is very hard if you have low ping because the server reading that you're in the position to be bounced happens way later and you kind of can't get to the edge of the platform enough without toppling to your death. Uh, this is actually probably one of the worst parts of tribulation mode, genuinely, just because of that latency discrepancy. So now you might think, oh, well, where do we go now? Can we jump on that? Okay, it spikes. Well, can we jump to that other one diagonally? Well, spike, 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 spikes. You get the idea. I'm going to stop getting myself killed now, and I'll show you the way through. It requires some very... Uh, like there, for example, the bounce never landed, and I'm wondering if that was a latency thing. Possibly not. Maybe it was just because I was too close to the edge. And there again, it didn't, it didn't trigger. I don't know why. Maybe it's just that the... And there, we're just falling off. What is happening? What is happening? Brax is going to come out of this with like 200 deaths. I'm so sorry. Okay. All right, here we go. Just slowly going insane here, guys. It's fine. All right? So instead of all of that, we're actually going to jump down. But not to this one closest. We're going to jump all the way down there. No, I did not jump dodge there. That's not a necessary jump dodge. I will try to never jump dodge unless I absolutely need to. And then from here, we can go there, but I've missed that trampoline. This is honestly such a simple sequence. Here, let's do it all in one. Ready? There, that, we made that. Almost didn't even get that there. Jesus. Okay, so we come along. Bear in mind, I've only jumped like four times right now. Okay, and then we come to that. Look, look how easy that is. I don't know how we messed that up earlier. Now we can... Now there's a lot of spikes around, but for once, the direct route is the safe one. Well, direct-ish. I go that way. And then we're into the clouds, and we're away. So yeah, pretty punishing sequence, especially for low ping, especially with the original bug. You do get an optional checkpoint here. I often don't bother with this one, but I will get it here, as you can see. Because not only can we get the optional checkpoint, but this is if we did the teleporter code. Look at that. It's completely covered in spikes. The devs didn't have to do it that way, for what it's worth. They could have just covered the teleporter exit with spikes. And maybe the one's adjacent, and that would have been it. But just for the pure spectacle of it, just to say, no, bad, bad idea. 
they layer it the whole way through. It's these little things, like their decision to plaster the entire platform with spikes, and what that like implicitly says to the player, that I find most interesting about Tribulation Mode. How you can have a whole conversation with your player base without uttering a word, just through what you put and where, right? By the extravagance of that, it's like a particular slapdown for doing a particular, you know, cheesy thing that was ready in normal mode, but they, they're one step ahead of you in tribulation, right? That is the essence of trib to me. Here, I'm pretty sure the devs want you to go on the left and climb around, but if you are good enough with your jump, you can skip past this and just land here. Now, the reason I think you have to go on the left, maybe, is because each of these platforms, this white one here and this white one, they have spikes on them. So just stay right on the corners like you saw I did there. You won't trigger the spikes and you can slip around undetected. And now there's not any spikes anymore right up to this checkpoint. Look at this. We're at the end of the level. And here, if you land on the bell, I can show you the cool thing. From the bell, you can land on this. And if the fish doesn't kill you, which it didn't, you can come over here and hit the, uh, the thing. Uh, like so. Uh, I actually very rarely pull that technique off, so I'm pretty buzzed right now. I managed to do it on the video. Uh, I would be remiss not to show you the full thing, though. So, uh, from the checkpoint, the way that you're actually meant to do it, because obviously the bell is a one-time only opportunity, and in multiplayer, the odds of getting everyone to launch and everyone to do it at once is kind of crazy. Instead, you're meant to come this way. What's tricky about it? Ah is these spikes all around here, but also this landing here also has a ton of spikes. So you have to be very precise to go from this slope straight up here. Do not try and go the direct route here. And when you get onto this, you've got to fight against falling to your death there. The rest of it, it's pretty much the same as always. You're only threatened by the fish and you go through. But that little bell technique can uh, help you out just a bit there. So that's pretty much the end of the level. You're going to be pretty fatigued by the time you get here regularly. What I will say is they do one final troll right here in the middle. <laughs> final spikes. You can go from the left or the right. I usually always go from the left. And over we go. So uh, I'm going to climb up. I'm going to hit the cage. There might be spikes around the outside of this one. Uh, which is what I think. Yeah, okay. I have to pay off on this. On the previous zone, uh, I did say that they didn't put spikes around the cages anymore. And then I second-guessed myself, didn't I, in the last video? And I said, no, maybe they do. I thought that they did here. Usually, I just stand still. But it looks like we can skate around perfectly fine. It might be that there's spikes around the base, the perimeter all the way out there. So if you well and truly fall all the way off, you get punished. But, um... Oh, God. Well, we're about to see there is! Okay, so, yeah, there are spikes there. <laughs> Normally, look, the safest way to do this is... Cool. We've done just about everything we can this episode to extend this level and make it seem a lot... I mean, it's a difficult level, so I kind of like it. It's about as long as World 1 was. Look, you can just stand still. Use your Elite. Make sure you stagger in with the Elite at the right time for added bonus points. Dodge, and there you go. You've beaten the level. Ton more baubles. I really want to go convert some of these now. And with that, we are on to the final level. I'm going to cut quite early here because the final level actually looks different. It's graphically changed compared to the normal mode counterpart and is a really fun, exciting thing at the end of the road. But to catch it, you have to see me next time for the finale of the Tribulation Mode run. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you there.